So I'm just going to jump right into this one. I tore down a dresser a few years ago and I've had these drawer faces up in my ceiling for a while. As some of you may know that I'm redoing my garage. Oh, wait a minute. Let me get my hearing protection. But anyway, I'm doing my garage in pallet wood. And part of that is reorganizing my garage. So I'm trying really hard to use as much of the scrap wood in my garage for projects around my garage. So for this project, I will be using these two drawer fronts and some of that old dining table that I had used in the past. As you may know from the thumbnail, we are going to be building a pipe clamp rack to store all my pipe clamps. And if you watched my last video, you noticed that I used to store them on my window and it made it look like a prison in here. As I had mentioned before, I'm going to be using two of these drawer faces. Now, one was not thick enough, so I'm going to glue two of them together and hope it's going to give me a thick enough body to hold the weight of these pipe clamps. The two of these together end up coming out to be around an inch and a half thick. And I'm just using some screws to hold this together. That way I can continue working on it while the glue dries. I'm making sure to pre-drill everything because I don't want any of this splitting. The watching this video, I feel like I may have used an excessive amount of screws. But I want to make sure it clamps down real good and gets real good glue contact. After getting everything screwed down, I can go over to the miter saw and trim everything to length. Now, my plan was to put the sides on the outside of this, hiding the edges. Well, my plan changed as I went through the project, and, well, you'll see here in a little bit. So at this point, I'm still going along with my original plan. I want this to be nice and flush with the back of this pipe clamp rack. So I went over to the joiner and made sure to joint one side. Now this side is, at the moment, going to be the back. So I want everything nice and square and straight. This will also give me a nice reference edge when I put it on the table saw to cut it to its final width. So even though I didn't go with the original plan, that jointed edge is not a wasted step. Because, like I said, I needed a reference edge for the table saw, and it now sits nice and flat to the wall that it's hanging on. So I laid out lines at 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5. Then I went every other line and drilled an inch and an eighth hole for my pipe clamps. This will give me enough room for the clamps to go into the rack with plenty of space that they're not touching or banging against each other. Now this is where the fancy comes in. This is one of the seat backs from that dining table that I had mentioned earlier. I did not want to sand inside this cove or decoration whatever you call it so it really comes down to laziness so what i did is i spray painted it it's just some rust-oleum spray paint that i got in my garage it's nothing fancy i'm not even sure it's meant for wood but that's the black spray paint that i had in my garage so that's what i used the piece that i'm working on right now will be the two sides i've measured it and I want this to be right at seven and a half inches for either side. So I'm going to cut this piece at 14 inches and then I'm going to cut it right down the center, giving me two pieces right about seven and a half inches.
This piece is going to be the back of my clamp ring. I have to get this piece under 13 inches because I have a 13 inch planer and that's what we're going to use to clean this up once I get everything to the right dimensions. What would a fancy ass clamp rack be without some fancy curves? So I take another piece of this old table and I'm going to use it kind of as a template to make some fancy round edges. I just kind of used the curves and the rounded edges and put them on there, drew some lines until I found something that I thought that I was going to like. And I don't know. I think it's going to look pretty cool. Take a look. What do you think? I took it over to the miter saw and I cut off as much as I could with the miter saw. I could have used the jigsaw and cut out a little more, but if you've watched this channel before, you know I hate the freaking jigsaw. So I just spent a little bit of time on my spindle sander and got everything nice and tuned in it took a little bit but it was pretty satisfying much more than using a jigsaw once i got that one nice and tuned in i was able to cut the other five out with a flush trim bit on my router table this worked very well And then like everything else in my shop, I'm going to throw a round over on the front side of this to uh, just give it a nice soft edge. So to put this all together, I'm just going to use some glue and screws. I'm not going to try to hide any of the screws because I'm using these black head square bits. I guess they're pocket hole screws. But I like the way they look. They kind of look like studs. Now if you look at my table, you can see blocks right here. Those blocks are going in my dog holes and I'm just going to push my board right up to them blocks and that will hold my board into place that way it doesn't run away from me while I'm driving these screws in. I'm making sure to pre-drill everything that way I don't split this wood and everything stays nice and tight.
And because I got a little bit of squeeze out, I'm going to use a straw and get the squeeze out right out of the inside corners of this. Just in case you're worried about it, I made sure to take all of the screws out of this before I ran it through the planer to bring it to the final thickness of inch and an eighth. So to finish the cuts that I couldn't get with the miter saw, I just used this pole saw. This isn't a fancy pole saw. I bought this one at Lowe's. It was like 30 or 45 bucks. It does what I need it to do. Maybe someday I'll buy an expensive one and see if it compares to this one. But for now, this one gets everything I need it to do done. So if you think you might want to be interested in a pole saw or might need a pole saw you might want to try out the one from Lowe's I'm not sponsored by Lowe's I just think this is a pretty handy tool to have and if you're not using one you might want to consider it after getting all these cut out I just used some two inch screws and ran them down from the top into those braces that I cut on the router earlier my fancy ass clamp rack. If y'all don't have a kitchen table and a couple of drawer faces, you can go buy you some plywood and do this at your house. Now, I think the black turned out pretty good. I was going to finish it with some darker stain, 
like I got on the shelf over here. But I think it would have taken away from the black, and I really like the black. I did run out of the black head screws, so I had to use some blue ones. But I put them on the back, and with this being six and a half foot tall, I don't think anybody's going to see them. So I'm not real worried about it. It's secure. It ain't coming off. I got the two inch lag bolts drilled into the studs. It ain't going nowhere. I got room for seven more pipe clamps because each one of these will hold three very stably. So I could easily get seven more in this particular rack. I know it's not gonna be enough clamps, but I still have room on that wall if I wanna build another one and hang some more clamps. All right, well, that's all I got for today. Y'all check out this uh, door trim video. I done it, that was my last video. Uh, or just click on some remodel. There'll be some more stuff coming up. I got shelves to build. Still got more walls to cover. All right. Well, go up the house, get something to eat. I'll see y'all later.